Does the creation of the AEC in general, uh, in, in one way to look at it is either help MNCs set up their networks in the region, establish uh, you know better facilities, better penetration in the markets, or would it in fact work the other way in terms of helping homegrown companies actually get a larger presence outside the region? I understand there's no straight answer to it perhaps, but some insight would be so. Uh, so just uh, before this session, actually, I look at the list of 100 biggest ASEAN companies and uh, try to see whether these companies actually have regional presence. So, apart from, I found out that apart from the banks, banks like DPS, Singaporean banks, and probably just my bank from Malaysia, yeah, they, those companies have presence in almost all, the, all of the countries, but the rest of them, they are either large regional players. Uh, sorry, large country players, or they expand to some other countries that are outside of the region. So I, I found that quite interesting, and uh, I think your question is also very relevant whether it's, there are policies that can help improve that, uh, that uh, the presence that uh, these large companies can access in other countries in ASEAN as well. So, uh, one thing that the uh, one other key fact that I found as well is after the ASEAN Economic Community is uh, formed and uh, implemented in the policies of the country, uh, for Indonesia, for example, uh, there are certain sectors that allow for uh, larger uh, foreign investments from other ASEAN countries compared to investments from uh, outside of the region. But those are very limited uh, in terms of number of sectors. Uh, probably out of 500 sectors uh, out there, there are less than 10 that have uh, preferences for ASEAN investors. And out of this stands, uh, the difference between maximum holdings that uh, the foreign investment investors have compared to ASEAN investors is actually very small, like 10 to 20 percent difference. So. Currently, it's uh, more of a, I, I guess, uh, I'm not a government person, but I guess uh, the government are still figuring out which sectors to open first and how to open it before they uh, really make it a free flow of capital. And that will impact the, uh, the expansion of the companies that you mentioned. Um, in my experience in my own country, Indonesia, is that uh, opening up investments to uh, even ASEAN countries is a, uh, can be a big issue in the media. Uh, and uh, for example, this, uh, ASEAN countries want to have this open skies policy where all the airlines from all the other ASEAN countries can land in any airports in the other countries. And that has been going on for years and uh, every time the government has uh, tried to open the discussion in in uh, domestic uh, policy debates, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's challenging to get acceptance by the industry players as well as the uh, larger uh, uh, society. Right? So it's progressing, but uh, it's probably can be progressing faster than currently it is. I don't know, is that Hi, Thanks for that, Ali. Uh, I think in the interest of time, uh, let me quickly get maybe a quick round of uh, closing comments. Let's keep the focus on what specific support or interventions you think are required uh, to really help these enterprises uh, expand, uh, be it nationally or within the region itself. So let me start with uh, Kevin. You know, and Kevin, again, maybe wearing your POP hub hat uh, as a convening platform and as a collaborator. What kind of uh, role do you think such platforms like VOP Hub could play uh, in bringing more regional dialogues and networks uh, into the space? And what support can that lend to the enterprises? I think in a regional level, if we want to um, make sure that enterprises can go to other countries or within the region, it really has to be that the other support networks in each of these countries will support um, other country entrepreneurs coming in and utilizing the resources 
and the networks available because I think right now it's very uh, nationally focused um, in Malaysia and Singapore and Indonesia. So for these resources to be able to open up and not only focus on growing the enterprises that sprung out from their own countries, but being able to bring in and support the ones that can replicate here. So I think that's my main uh, insight that I think would have the best impact in being able to share the ideas and grow the different sort of enterprises in this region. Well said, Young. Thanks. And Tao to you, from a government point of view, um, you did speak about uh, you know, looking at the Singapore model and then implementing some of those things there. How do you look at these intergovernmental uh, relationships and learnings taking place in the region, which actually do end up supporting the social enterprises? So what role can a government body such as yourselves play in enabling those discussions and building those linkages? Yes, the, so uh, I think that the, uh, we are not uh, have the regulation for the ourselves. But we also have a link with the other countries because the, the, the political leader of the Vietnam, they attend a lot of the forum in the ASEAN and they share experiences uh, in the making law for the social enterprise. And um, uh, the wife of the Prime Minister uh, in Vietnam, they, uh, she had opportunity to go to the ASEAN forum for women. Yes, yeah. So uh, he, uh, she also shared our experiences uh, in the uh, backing law and uh, she tried to uh, convince the, the other country to help uh, the Vietnam to, to develop the social enterprise. So I think that um, it's not only in, 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 in national, uh, in national, but also in the ASEAN region uh, already now we have the contact with the, 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 the political, political high uh, leader of the different countries. Uh, but for social enterprise, we, uh, I think that um, because the social enterprise in different sectors, there are different sectors, agriculture services and healthcare. So now we should to take the the uh, the bread in order for the, the the enterprise in sector to discuss each other because uh, now they need to find the markets for the product. Uh, but uh, you can make a platform for the social enterprise, but the different social enterprise, for the different sector, it's very difficult for them to, to, uh, uh, to find which market they, they can to find and how they can uh, develop their product. But it's uh, very important if we can uh, organize a platform for sector, for the easy, for the social enterprise, the sector, they can learn each uh, experience from the different countries and they can find the market for their product. To get a link in order to, to, uh, to share their product, for example, I think that the, from the government side, uh, we want to look at the, the uh, we um, uh, contact with the, the other government and to convene and to persuade them to develop the social enterprise and also for the sector, develop the sector for the social enterprise. Thanks, Tao, and to thank all the panelists. Uh, it was a great discussion and we of course continue building on these discussions and interactions as we start working more closely with all of you uh, and more of you in the room in Southeast Asia as well. So thank you very much. <laughs>